We fish for the fish that eat the fish you fish for, and you should too. Quit jacking around and get you some hog dogs today. What was that one fifteen last night? You guys got? I don't. I don't know. I, I keep losing. Like the fifteen is a big flathead. Man. I know the, the pictures don't do it justice. I was really. I yeah. took really bad pictures. I would say it's at least twelve. That's a good fish, though. I was so pumped just to have it in my hands. It was like being like way up here, like on top of a mountain, and then Blake's like cut it loose, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> well, I just I'm, I'm hanging out with these it, guys. It I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be dicks. So it, it was a PB, right? Like it, that was my personal best. Yep. What did you think so, when I said just stick your hand in there and grab it? I was like, I guess this is what noodling's like, and. <laughs> You know, I kind of, like, hesitated. I'm like, fuck it, these guys are looking at me. So I've never seen it hooked like it was, like, pierced. Like, it went up through. I've seen him caught, like, by the eyeballs. It was mm-hmm. pierced like a but gothic it was, curl. It, yeah, yeah, it came up and went, like, back in. Yeah, I've seen that. It was, yeah, it was wild. It was crazy. So I've never seen it like that. So you were pretty safe on that one. And I know you were. sticking my hand in his mouth? Yeah. I didn't know what the head for teeth. You've, yeah. Dude, you've caught catfish before. I know, but I never caught a flathead like that. It was huge. Dude, some of them, man. They'll you tear you out. Oh, they will tear the shit out of you. That's what I'm they saying. Will. You watch them shows with them, you know, noodlers. And I was like, oh, let's do it. And there's a hook in it, and it's like going through his eyeball. <laughs> I was like, wow. You're not sure which way it's going. Yeah. So welcome to the Mud Bum USA podcast. We are here. Blake Show, Mitch Fink, and our special guest this week, Andy Novak. And we are at fish camp for the first time this year, and we are just reminiscing about the last night's set. Um, the water here, we're on the Mississippi, and the water, we're probably two and a half feet high, but it actually it, it dumped, and the bottom dropped out of it. We Like three and a half inches we lost today Good. from this morning. So the water's been high, so we've been. it's tough finding sets right now. A lot of the sets have been in the water, not even in the bank, right? But uh, we, we had some success last night and caught two, one flathead, one channel cat, and Andy has never set bank poles before, so we... Not once, but I've cooked <laughs> brats before. He's from Wisconsin, so he's cooked brats. He's in charge of that tonight. But uh, Yeah, so it's, it was a good night. Weather, I mean, I don't think you could really ask for a better night. Oh, it was awesome. It was in no the fi- 50s. Dude, beautiful. It was so perfect. 70s during the day. Today it's windy, but it's it's actually dying down right now, so I'm excited to set tonight. We got some bait bait set up and uh, see what we can do again tonight. We're gonna set some trot lines, maybe do some bow fishing. Yeah. And um, I don't know. We'll see if the bullfrogs are croaking. Maybe Dude, find some, some frog bullfrogs. Legs. I know. Tasty frog legs. Get frog legs, Andy. Uh, actually, that's kind of a contentious subject with me and Blake here. <clears throat> so I popped this cherry frog in last. Last year? Yeah. Last oh, year? Really? Dude, we smoked them. We caught like 35 one night. Dude, gosh. Yeah. They, are so, they are so good if they were We even convinced right? my wife to thump them on the deck of the boat. <laughs> we, we, had, we had video evidence of yeah. thumping frogs on the yeah. ball of the boat. So that, that was a fun night. Best time ever. But I don't know. Like I've been seeing the frogs during the day, but I, I think at night it's still cooling down. I don't think they're as active. Yeah, I don't know. I I know we were up at Shore Slough. I didn't see any frogs, but man, if they, when they do come out, we will be frogging. Yeah. They are so good. I think with the high water, though, we're not getting the vegetation growth that we did right away last year. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see as the summer goes on, but I'm just excited to be out fishing. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to set tonight. I've always had super, super good luck. You know, we got a little bit of a storm front coming in the morning, and I don't know about you, but every time I've sat, poles before a storm that comes in i smash it man well it's, it's always it's awesome. when the water's rising and falling right when the water's mm-hmm. moving and so i think we got the water moving and we got a front coming through so i'm ex- hopefully and we got trot lines to set tonight I'm trying to set some trot lines with some crawlers yeah, on we stopped by your grandpa's that was yeah. like i felt like a kid in a neighborhood going up like grandpa <laughs> you got any trot lines and then he comes up he's like yeah yeah you want a floater you want a sinker <laughs> Dude, he, 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 he's like what color yeah. what shape he of lives course for I that trot lines. Dude, <laughs> such a cool experience like just just 
pull up to the dock and see in that. Was I, I just think the like, first thing was, was how, how many do you want? Yeah. <laughs> are you going to set 15 or are you going to set 200? Comes out with a wooden box. And <laughs> he's, an, he's an old school cat fisherman. Yeah, he, he was a commercial fisherman for a lot of years uh, when there's the, the fish market here in town. And then my, my great grandpa father owned the fish market. So they were trout lying. Netting. It's in your blood. It's in my blood, man. That, and and that's why I love what mud bum is. It's it's such a non-traditional way of fishing, the way we look at it today. But if you look at it in the past, trot lining, nets, bait poles, like that's where fishing evolved from, right? And and historically, just our our family. I mean, we've been in this business. I'm mean, not business, but just fishing for shit. 65 years 70 years yeah three or four generations it's kind of like me swinging a hammer right same but different yeah hammers have changed poles have changed they have technology's changed wood still wood fish still swim in the river yep they yeah. still gotta eat we just gotta find better ways to catch them <laughs> <laughs> but no the, the fishing's been tough though i mean we've been like i said we're sh- shit the last week we've been 12 6 i think 12 7 was about the highest we were now we're about 11 5 so we're, it's, it's on the drop i think the fishing's gonna pick up i think it's gonna be awesome and the, the tough thing great. that i found is the flow right that that was keeping the, the bait in the water that's what i ran into last night like um i know there's fish there but the banks were flowing you know typically there's a current seam where i was at and I've fished this hole where I was fishing last night my whole life. Like you said, you know, your family's got generations of fishermen, mine as well. I had a neighbor uh, back in New Albany that he's a commercial fisherman. I'd go out with those guys. Um, it, it's awesome. But this spot that I went to last night, that was the issue I ran into a little bit, was the current seam was not a couple feet from the, the bank. It's the right over flowing. top of it. Yeah, and I did a double set last night where I've been fishing this spot my whole life, and I've never not got a catfish in there, but that water was just flying last night. Yeah, unfortunately, couldn't keep the bait alive there, but I'm going to switch it up tonight. Yeah, so like I said, we, we've been setting. Actually, I found some new sets last night that I think when the water goes down, it's going to be really good. But I was telling these guys, they were surprised that we're setting you know, the bait as high in the water as we are, you think mm-hmm. channel for flatheads and things like that, you want to be on the bottom. But um, the way that the water is right now, so typically they come up at night, you know, and they're floating the shallows along the shorelines hunting for, for food. And now we've got almost like a double shelf. And so yeah, I actually found some really good sets that I'm excited about for the season. You know, so this might be some cutting edge stuff that just with you describing, you know, maybe, I don't know if you got to turn the mic off, we'll edit this out. If, even necessary yeah we can do that what if you made like deep water poles yeah i mean for the bottom feeders longer ones you know so you can maintain at that shelf that that common shelf where they usually run or do you think because the water table is moving up the fish move up or do you think they still run that shelf even though i I think they run it either way one thing that i do want to do is so right now the hog logs are seven foot long yeah what I want to do um, with our patent and our design patent is I want to design basically a three foot extension so we can run ten foot long poles. Yeah. And I think right. that is going to be huge I'm if, telling if we you, can man, roll with that. For for all the people who, who fish the Mississippi, I mean if you if you're familiar with the Mississippi, the Mississippi is full of tree roots. It is. And those tree roots are great places for catfish to hide. They, them big flatheads a lot of times will hide way up under those roots, but the problem is, you know, a lot of times you can't get that bait quite out far enough, but that extension's gonna Nothing change the whole thing. Nothing pisses me off more oh. than rolling up and see your bait wrapped a hundred times around a tree root. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> or going to stick stick the pole in a good hole, and it's like down through a thousand tree roots and there's nothing holding it, and you can't sit there. Yep. My son last night was, uh, was with me setting poles and it was so funny because I brought like a trim saw my trim saw that I use for bow hunting yeah and so I'm hanging over the edge of the boat you know because I'm in a set just like that where I'm like I know there are fish there yeah I got to get my bait out there far (laughs) enough so I'm like 
face down in the water, sawing roots <laughs> off. And my son, who's like three and a half, he's like, Dad, what are you doing? Are you trying to swim? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to catch some flatheads. <laughs> trying to clear a path. Here. Just trying to get my damn bait out far enough. So, yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was it was frustrating, but we made it happen. That's all that matters. Getting the kids out is huge. We set trot lines three times this year. And the last couple of times we've been nailing the bullheads, like big bullheads. Yeah, see, that's what I'm wondering, though. You know, that brings up a good subject. Bluegills or bullheads, what are you? Do you like for, for the river here? Bluegills. Bluegills. Me too, man. I, I'll tell you, I got buddies that fish the De, you know down by Des Moines. They do a lot of these smaller rivers, and they swear by the bullheads. And mm. I've tried them. Nothing against them. I know guys that hammer some big flatheads with bullheads. But I think I think they're uh, the filet mignon of the Mississippi for a flathead is yeah. a, is a bluegill. Yeah, you know? I, I, and the palate, I, you know, their taste palate must be different or something. I, I don't mean, know what it is. I prefer bluegills over everything, <laughs> so I don't see why a flathead would be there. Yeah, we were catching bait today, and uh, we're catching some pretty good bluegills, and. Uh, I'm throwing him in the bait cooler, and he's like, no, man, no, we got to batter that one. And I'm like, nope, that's going to be supper for some big flatty tonight. Yeah, I, got, I already <laughs> took it out of the bait box. It's <laughs> but, big bait, big yeah. fish, right? Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, it, the nice thing about bullheads is they're hardy, right? They hold up all night long and are swimming around. But you know what? We, Dude, I, that, that was something that... Are you going to interrupt me? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. You go ahead. I was going to say that's something that really impressed me about the bluegill. Just another reason that I love it even more was, you know, we, we went and set those sets last night at 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And we rolled up, what time was that in the afternoon? Two, three? Yeah. And that a couple of them were just still swimming, ripping circles. Yeah. Like I think as long as you're not in, in the vitals, you know, you get between the vitals and that dorsal fin, I, th- I think you're, you're in good shape. And they were lively, lively, not like barely moving right like they were shaking the pole what i was surprised yeah. about saint piggybacking off what you just said was i i found a small eddy where i was fishing and that's where i put put the bait in some calm water but the current actually changed like i got there in the morning and that's that's why you know, i didn't have nothing on that poles because that current changed and that bluegill was just flying around and i was surprised to see that thing still alive because anytime i've left them in current like that mm-hmm. they're typically dead but this guy was that's well, a barge. dinner, dinner bell. Must be the, the brats must be done. <laughs> oh, yeah, 10 more minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, we are right on the main channel and up in Pool 9 on the Mississippi, and we've got yeah, a barge man. going by. And I, I can tell know, you, he, man. He must have some girls flashing him or something on the That's beach. That's what it is. Well, he's got, the cameraman must have some beads. He's waving his beads around. <laughs> you know, there's a bachelor bar right here in a houseboat <laughs> over there. Yeah, boys. I don't know if those are beads getting swung around. There's fucking dudes over there. <laughs> so, yeah. But no, it was a good night. I was excited to set out um, tonight as well. Like I said, we got some storms coming in tonight, but hopefully, I don't know. They keep pushing it back, so I saw the rain's not till like 6, so I think if we get up it should be 5-ish, awesome. we'll, be, we'll be all right. I think it's going to be good. Now, did you guys, with your poles last night, were you guys in some deep deep area or a little of both we had some we had some sets that were shallow yeah the one that we caught caught the one flat head on was a, a pretty good drop off yeah we were it, right it on the shelf there really? and then we you know like you it, were teaching me that you got a feel for that drop and then just set just above it and then get it so it'll be right in that fish's face as it's cruising that mm. shelf out of that shelf yeah yeah, that's what I look for, man. Is is just that super deep, deep pocket comes up. And it's got that little shelf and be right on the top. So of we were the talking shelf. last night. Would you rather set above the hole or below the hole? I thought of this last <laughs> night. This is this is a good topic. You know, I uh, what's what's crazy is I've I've actually if I can if I have a snag out in front of me, if the wood is not actually going to the bank, if the snag's not coming from the bank where mm. I've got I've R- set, root ball on the bank I've, yeah I've actually set straight across from snags before and done really well but as you know a lot of the times trees fall in water that's where your jam is and that's where yeah. um, I still in my mind think that being above it is is the way to go and that's that's what I said too. You, it, it's such a 
give and take, right? Like, so you got your bait up there, you got scent and well, blood. They, they smell. And, and, the, the and, and, and sound coming downstream right in into the bedroom. Or you got that eddy coming around the snag and the hole on the lower side. Mm -hmm. But it, which way do those fish go when they're when they're cruising? I don't know. Are that's they, hard. Are they that's going, hard. rolling downstream and coming back up, or are they going upstream and coming back down? I, and the worst part about it is I've caught fish below Both them places. and above them. Yeah. I think what they do is I think they I think they hit that shore no matter what. They just and go, they up, go up, up and up down. And they really do cru cruise back and forth. But, but you know, I mean, they 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 smell. You know, that's that's how they taste the water. But so. there's no way that scent is going upstream. That's what I'm it's saying. Impossible. Exactly. That's why I still I still love being above it. Yeah. And I got a lot of friends that do this. They've done it for years. They swear above it, but you know I've caught them pretty much every which way. So that's something that I've never even considered was so like you're trying to win the catfish, just like deer hunting, like bull hunting. You wanna? It's really what it is. They're, they're predator. You wanna keep the yeah. They're cruising. You know, one one technique that I want to I want to try is is there's a lot of there was a guy that I met not too long ago that would trot line with some heavy weights in the trough behind behind wingdings and smashes catfish smashes them. But I mean, you know, got to get a pretty heavy weight, get in that yeah. trough. He swears by it. So he's a big bank and pole or a big pole pole, pole line, line fish. Yeah, yeah, and he's. He, I mean, what he does a lot of times for his flatheads, cuts the head off, keeps the bluegill alive, cuts the head off the bluegill, strings it on quick on a 10 knot hook, fishes that trough right behind that wing dam. Yeah. Well, I mean, this, this guy's winning tournaments all the time doing that. So then he got the idea of trot lining behind those yeah. wing dams. Just, a, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't run one all the way across that wing dam because obviously people fish that, it could, it could snag it. But he'll get to where if there is there's some deep water, he'll run it right off the bank and trot line that that and just hammers no, catfish I, doing that. That's what I've been wanting to do too is is run a line with live bait. Yeah, that's S what he's doing. Sink it down the backside of the wing dam. Yeah, I've caught trough. my biggest channel cat on the backside of a wing dam. Yeah, I uh, so the, the wing dam that's just north of here. Last year I caught my first blue cat and act, ended up actually catching two blue cats. Swear to God. Up Which here? is yeah up here. Swear to God, I had a blue. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've never even heard of them coming up this far. I've never caught one. I swear I've got one. I'm not calling you a liar. In the, in the <laughs> same, in the same exact spot too. That's what's crazy is that we we the two that we caught were off of a wing dam just north of here on a bank pole. That was awesome. One was big. One was like ten. Big, big for me. So I'm thinking. To trot line a wing dam, we're gonna have to do this. Trot line a wing dam. I think the water's gotta be down, so it, you know the shoreline side's almost sticking out, right? Yep. Weighted heavy on your end. On the end. Mm-hmm. So, and then ru yeah. run a jug or something up to mark it. Mm-hmm. To grab off of. And then yeah, just sink the sink the backside. I think you. I think or you could run upper and downers too, right? You keep your corks mm -hmm. every other. And run yeah. some weights and corks and weights and corks and run some uppers and downers. I just think it's an awesome idea. I mean, you know that those wing dams hold big catfish. It might be a good set during the day. Yeah. You know, because when we pull line fish during the day, we fish the wing dams and things like that, and you're on the bottom. So I think it might be a good set during the day. You know, I read a, <clears throat> I recently read an article. It was pretty awesome. So it was it was about pole and line catfishing for flatheads in the middle of the day, which most people will always think, well, you know, it's the worst, worst time to fish a flathead. Middle of the day, 85 degrees out. So what a lot of these guys are doing in these tournaments is they're taking, you know, they're pulling in line and they're using live bait, but they kind of fish it like how you would pitch for bass in a lot of these big snags. So what they'll do is they'll basically take their trolling motor and jog around these big deep snags above them, yep. pitch it in there, drop that bait down, wait five minutes if they're not if they're not biting, jog that trolling motor over again, drop that bait down. So really what they're doing is they're they're just dropping that bait right in front of that yep. inactive flathead during the day and seems like it worked. Basically knocking them on the head with it. Pretty much just putting it right in their face right because in the bedroom. Yeah. yeah, like my I was talking to my dad about two about a, oh, about two months ago about this. 
the DNR somewhere, I can't remember what he's telling me, but they tagged a couple flatheads. And uh, what was crazy about it is they tracked them, so it would track their movement. Those flatheads, a lot of those tagged flatheads were moving, they were staying put in one spot for 22 hours a Damn, day. Really? Two hours out of that day were going to a shoreline, and that's where they'd hunt. So that, you know, if you think about that, that pole and line fishing like that, if you could just put that bait in front of that flathead in the middle of the day, yeah. Seems like it'd work. Yeah, definitely. When, yeah. when you're eating a freaking 10 ounce bluegill, how much do you have to eat every four days, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, yeah. Plus that's a foot long. They got all the stickers. I mean, that's gotta be kind of difficult to, <laughs> to down. process through. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm gonna need a couple of days to work that out. <laughs> but maybe that's the difference between bullheads and bluegills. Uh, bullheads got them, you know, big w- barbs w- and bluegills. Barbs, oh, yeah. uh, a couple of little, little ones. We'll wrap it up here. What did you think of your first bank pull sets? I think it was um, probably the coolest thing I've done in a, in a fair bit up there. Uh, I I love it. Uh, as far as like just seeing, it's it's so simple. Um, yet you need to really know what you're doing in order to be like successful at it. And here I'm like, the only reason we caught a fish because Blake was like, this is what you need to do. You know, he's pretty much guiding the whole uh, process for me. But, man, I'm hooked. Uh, I am I am in it. I'm going to be, you guys are actually going to probably be pissed because you're going to see Andy Novak's bank holes. <laughs> yeah. And, we love to hear it, man. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> up and down, I'm not going to say where exactly, but it'll be in pool nine, that's for sure. So what, what was one takeaway? What, what was one thing you learned? From uh, how S- setting your first pulse, how the um, the angle, the angle, like you have to have it. I mean, at least at a forty-five degree angle, right? You want to be having it at a forty-five degree angle, and then you want the fish. You don't want it all the way down on the bottom. You want it circle, making some ruckus. You want it like flopping around. You don't want it just hanging Absolutely. out there. You want her kicking up a wake and being able to like draw attention to it just like anything you know you know what i was gonna say what's that rig up your leads over the fucking boat that's a good point and your fish too <laughs> and like your fish i didn't drop a fish ba- ba- but i, ba- ba- I, I did to come by i did drop one of them hooks that are uh <laughs> i mean those hooks are expensive they they we've tested them on great white sharks and um <sighs> You don't want to just be throwing those in the river. You want to be <laughs> you know, poking you, them into flatheads, right? If you've got thousands of dollars at hand, certainly bait your poles <laughs> sitting in the water. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. See, see if you can throw the line through the barrel swivel. But, but for us broke ass white boy <laughs> Iowa folk here, we uh, yeah, bait your bait your lures and so forth Inside in the, the boat. boat. Yeah, that's, you got seven yeah. foot of line. Pull, pull it in the boat. I promise you, I'll never do that again. I'm gonna but, hold you to that. Yeah. Hey, I will say. You know, to piggyback off what you just said, I whipped an anchor out yesterday, and that was attached to a really expensive pole. So <laughs> I donated that pole to the uh, to the flathead I was actively after. Well, hopefully that donation will reciprocate tonight. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll hook We're getting some. revenge tonight. Yeah, for sure. That, it, La- last comment. Did you guys see on one of the, the catfish pages on Facebook the other day, there was a guy caught a flathead three hooks in it the one that is he caught it on two other hooks that he broke yeah. off and it wasn't a big fish really he, he must just been in a snag where he ripped it off no man that's that fish crazy. had that, heart that was sweet that fish had heart three, three, really three freaking hooks in it god that's nuts yeah yeah, yeah that's wild can you so, brand fish like tss, you know, you know a lot of the noodlers will tag like cut the dorsal fin or ta- tag them so yeah. they know, know what they're noodling before I don't know. Maybe someone you gave it a lip ring or something. I don't know. Next time you you recognize well, it. Well, I'll tell you what. We left that hook in that one I caught. We would have recognized it. it was like, like, like that. I didn't sure. know if it was going to a Marilyn Manson concert or wanted to get cut loose. So you bet. No, that's good. We're excited. Set lines again tonight. We appreciate you guys listening in. Um, check out the Facebook page, mudbumusa.com, and. Uh, 
always we're always dropping new apparel, new hats, things like that. And of course, the hog log um, coming again soon is the pig twig. I'm excited to get the pig twigs rolling. A um, little, little cheaper option for smaller channel cats and things like that. But thanks for listening in. Um, give us a like, subscribe, and uh, we'll check in next time on the Mud Bum Media Machine. We fish for the fish that eat the fish you fish for, and you should too. Quit jacking around and get you some hog dogs today.